Aloha, y'all. I am hiding inside from the freezing rain. My face is like cold and wind chapped. Paddling has been difficult. So it's a great day to share some thoughts on my lactate testing. So the video for the blood lactate test on stand-up paddling um, versus outrigger canoe eight months ago, the results are in. I wanted to see initially if my aerobic threshold was different on the stand-up than an outrigger canoe. Life kind of started happening and unfolding. I got really busy and I didn't get to test stand-up right alongside outrigger. Is my aerobic threshold that much different on stand-up or have I improved it that much over the last eight months? Definitely improvement being the number one reason we're gonna see a big difference in the results, but I will do another test side by side. I'm gonna test both craft at the same time just so I can kind of squash any questions about that in the back of my mind. Something I found really, really interesting and important about the Outrigger aerobic threshold testing with the Lactate Plus meter, which you can review over here on the cards. If you watch that video, it's fun. But the importance of my warm up. Even after like five to 10 minutes at a heart rate of 118 beats per minute, which is like barely walking pace, I had already hit a blood lactate of 2.5. And research indicates that the aerobic threshold for most people is somewhere between two and 2.5 millimoles of uh, blood lactate. I hit that threshold like without even paddling. Staying at that lower heart rate for an additional 10 minutes actually saw decreased values of blood lactate as I continued to warm up. And that was indicative of the aerobic metabolism turning on, like switching on, and it sucked up some of that uh, lactate and used it as fuel. If, however, I wasn't doing that test and I was just jumping on my board or on my boat to go for a paddle and I just jumped onto it and started right off at 130, 140 beats per minute for a warm up. my body would already be generating enough lactate to use as fuel and my aerobic system would have never had to generate that energy for me. If I did that every single time I ever went paddling, I would never fully train my aerobic system. So that's why it's really important to train your aerobic system. You have to warm up gently and come at it from underneath. If you just hop on your board, hop on your boat, and jump out there and generate some blood lactate, that energy pathway is going to turn on and be activated. Whereas we want to get more efficient. We want to ensure that our body is capable of using aerobic metabolism at energy for energy at a pretty respectable pace. Cause that's what happens when you fall off that draft train or um, aren't able to keep up in a race. You've burned through uh, that, that gly those glycogen stores, that lactate, and now you have to fall back and rely on your aerobic metabolism and away goes everybody else in the race. If we burst into an all out sprint, that's the ATP PCR, the creatine phosphate pump, um, and then we slow down again, and then that's that glycolytic pathway. That's, you know, two minutes-ish anaerobic metabolism. At that rate, however, we would accumulate blood lactate faster than we could clear it, and then we have to slow down again. And that's when we rely on aerobic metabolism. And it is a blend at that point, right? If you want to be faster aerobically, you can train specifically the aerobic system all by itself. If you're never warming up gently enough and slowly enough to not inject your muscles with any lactate, then you're not building your aerobic base. So by warming up slowly and properly, you're warming up the aerobic base and the aerobic metabolism, and you're going to be able to train it in that session. We wanna be sure that we're getting faster using our aerobic metabolism. This is why it is so important to set your intentions before every paddle training session, every workout. Before you head out, know what it is you're trying to accomplish and stay focused. Be sure to keep an eye out for my athlete agenda planner uh, to help you with this in the future. Secondly, I know you're probably thinking things like, the top athletes are definitely training at higher heart rates. They're not overtrained. They're not aerobically deficient. You know, you're using anaerobic metabolism when you race, so you need to 
train exactly the way you race and you have to train that system. Athletes that regularly train at those higher heart rates, some of them have higher aerobic thresholds than you and they're using less glycogen and producing less lactate at those heart rates than you are. If your aerobic threshold is down at 145 and you're like, oh, I gotta paddle at 160 because such and such my competition is paddling at 160, but that's 15 beats per minute above your aerobic threshold, you're gonna dig yourself into a hole and they're gonna get faster. If you need a reminder of why training like that or why a ton of anaerobic training is bad for you and detrimental to your health, um, be sure to check out the resources on my blog um, about my battle with aerobic deficiency syndrome and the more scientific piece I wrote for Paddle Ninja over here. I have set my intentions for the last eight months and really worked on my aerobic system. I wanted to first and foremost become a healthy paddler. Winning is secondary, like being a, a more competitive athlete is secondary to my health and my longevity. So yeah, let's see how the testing goes. Burr. <laughs> I'm sitting down and resting right now so that we can take my resting blood lactate reading before we start. We're testing early season, just checking in with the aerobic system to see what heart rate my aerob aerobic threshold is at. And I'm very curious, we, we did this on Outrigger Canoe. We'll be on this side of the screen. Ding. And I wanna know if it's different in on a stand-up paddleboard. So uh, aerobic threshold is sport specific. Your aerobic threshold when running is not the same as when you're cycling, is not the same as when you're outrigger canoeing, is not the same as when you're stand-up paddling, is not the same as when you're swimming. You get the point. It's sport specific. I, I've been working on it for a year now. Your pinky's in the shot. <laughs> I've been working on it for a year now. My zone one and two for the outrigger canoe, I can keep my heart rate nice and low and get a and log a pretty high speed at a nice low heart rate. So aerobic capacity development in the outrigger has been going very, very nice. Every time I stand on my stand-up paddleboard, it's like my heart rate just skyrockets. And I don't know if that's just because that's the way I was been doing that for 10 years. I thought training was all about pushing my heart rate as high as it could go every single session. And how long could I hold that high heart rate? And that's literally what I did for like six or seven years was just as high as my heart rate, I could get it and hold it there for as long as possible. I thought that's what training was. Durr. Sorry, <laughs> that's not a, if you still think that's what training is, I don't mean durr. I mean, he, let me help you. Don't do that. We've all been there. High school gym class, right? Push hard, max all out, vomit every session, right? No, the magic happens when we train our aerobic system. So where is my aerobic threshold on a stand-up paddleboard today? I will find out. Corey Curtis. He's getting the test strips out and the lancets, cause what do you get to do? Oh, stab boy. <laughs> so the poker's ready. Just a standard diabetes needle auto poker. You set the height, we're gonna go to, I wish it went to 11, but it doesn't. It only goes to six. Does it need to be on six? The deeper the poke, the better. <laughs> Don't stab boy. Let's put it on slow-mo to see it. Hopefully you guys can see this. You need bigger ears. You don't need to not be so close. They're gonna like see up my nose, the cameras. <laughs> no, I don't wear makeup for videos or anything. I don't wear makeup or anything, period. <laughs> if you don't like looking at me, that's your problem, not mine. You're on the wrong YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, you're on the wrong YouTube channel. <laughs> so we poke. Okay. A nice spot. Hopefully she bleeds good. Ah. Just thinning it out. In the cleaning process. Am I still bleeding? <laughs> Just stab me in the neck. <laughs> Take it out of the neck. Three, two, one, point, point eight. eight. I did this one fasted. Last time I ate a banana. This time I ate an avocado. Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't, it's already 10 o'clock and I struggle with under eating. So I, 
I didn't want to undereat, and it was just way too cold. I wasn't coming out here any earlier than this. Hey, no, 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 it was cold. I ate an avocado, things are going good, body's burning fats, I'm not using glycolysis for anything, and I'm going to warm up at an, like a painfully slow level. We really want the aerobic metabolism to turn on. I do not want to get any lactate. I, I don't want my muscles to generate any lactate um, to utilize as fuel. We really want a clear reading on the aerobic threshold. 20 minute warm up. I'm gonna come back in 10 minutes. Now, if you could have a low heart rate boot turn and stand up, very efficient. Back it up, boy. Beep, beep. I'm here for the stabbing. So we were on that one. Gotta go here. Learn how to keep your heart rate up. That's not the problem. The problem is learning how to keep my heart rate down. Hell yeah! I'm so happy! I'm going for 10 more minutes. Wind is uh, coming up briskly once you're out in the cove. So going out is cake. And then when you turn around, there's, there, there's definitely enough wind to make a difference. I know I'm using my aerobic metabolism right now because I have to pee so bad. Because if I wasn't an aerobic, I wouldn't have to pee. That's actually, that's cheaper than a blood lactate test. Do you have to pee? You're using aerobic metabolism. All right. After this, we're going to the three minuters. Three to four minutes. Okay, excellent. Going up to a 125 for three minutes. 0.6. Go ahead and start. Uh, my reading was one, heart rate was around 125. When I turn around, but I, I don't have any, I can't go up one first. It's a dead end. Oh, I piss off all the geese. There's like 50 geese nesting. 0 0.8. Okay then. So I'm definitely still aerobic. All right, I'm gonna go for 145. Okay, uh, 147, like one, I was aiming for 145. I hit 150 a few times, but the average was 147. 49. 147, Yeah. 1.1. 1.1, going up for 157. I was definitely closer to uh, 157. No thinking, just bleeding. Don't think bleed. <sighs> oh, where do I want it? I want it on the front. Okay. I'm bleeding. Very much. I hit a nerve. <laughs> 1.4, that's really excellent. Dude, like 167 on the dot the whole time. That's an easy pace to lock into. I think that's probably my maximum aerobic pace. If not that, just one the next step up. You just need to get fresh blood out of it. Fresh blood. Don't take too long. My body's gobbling up my lactate. 177 is the next step. 9. Ooh, that's, I, I was pretty sure that's my aerobic threshold, but we'll do the next one, but that'll be it. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, 179. I know that I can't hold a 187 for four minutes, so I know we're somewhere. My lactate threshold, I think, is 183. Five. Ooh, yep, that was it. 
Test complete. Do it again. More data. <laughs> what do you want me to do? 177? Well, unless it's over my lactate threshold, and that would mean blood lactate's accumulating faster than I can remove it. One eighty. That's how fast I go for the end of my races. My heart rate goes back to normal very, very quickly, though. So that means my aerobic metabolism, which is fully turned on after that warm up, is sucking up all of my. One eighty. Six point six. Accumulating faster than it can be rid. I think so. I mean, at once. Go again. 177, 182. Between 177 and 182, pretty sure that's my lactate steady state, where I can, as long as I'm hovering in there, I can clear it as quickly as I'm generating it. So that's like, when I'm racing, that's the zone I'm racing in. So what's important for me, at that 167, so yeah, so kinda, I, don't, I don't do a lot of training at that. I'm excited. I want to see how that relates to the, um, so Garmin estimates your zones, right? Based on resting heart rate, you know, X workouts you do and your max. See how this relates to my zones and whatnot. Cause my, I, I definitely pushed up my aerobic threshold since last year or my aerobic. Um, thing. But you know what you'd have to do the, in the outrigger canoe? It was still lower in the outrigger canoe in last year though. So I'm really excited because I did a lot of work. So I mean, it might be working. It's working. Hell in the face. All right, what now? Breakfast? I have to pee so bad. <laughs> and I have to eat. All right. Yeah, let's do this.